Bonsoir, ben merci à tous d'être euh, là pour le, pour le quatrième euh, événement qu'on organise avec la marée haute. Donc, uh, always uh, events that uh, have something to, uh, to do with, uh, with culture, art and, uh, and society with different, uh, different links uh, each time. This came from, a, um, from an idea that uh, la marée haute had of organizing something based on, uh, on digital art and then uh, And then uh, our team uh, realized that, that there was the, uh, the Brussels uh, Blockchain Week uh, happening. So uh, could I have maybe uh, someone from the Blockchain uh, Week to, uh, to come here with, uh, with us to, uh, to, uh, to, say, uh, to say a few words uh, after? So Cloud7 is a, uh, a co-working co and an exhibition uh, space. So we're happy to, uh, to welcome uh, as many uh, different people from uh, different uh, environments to come and, and work here and, and enjoy the, uh, and enjoy the, uh, the art. Huh? So maybe you can uh, tell us a little bit about what, what the Mario is doing and then, the, uh, and then you can uh, tell us about the uh, yes. and we can then I'll introduce the other panelists. Okay, thank you, Frédéric. Uh, so hey, my name is Jonathan. I'm representing La Mario Haute, and we're basically a music publishing house and a creative agency. Uh, so we're basically trying to develop talents and to give them some kind of platform. So today we are co-creating with uh, Cloud7 this event about NFTs. And uh, we hope that you will all have a nice event. This is our fourth event in the Cloud7 and we're really thankful for them for this opportunity. So thank you. Okay. So now... Why today, Yeah, so very happy to meet you all. My name is Raoul. I'm uh, one of the co-founders of the Brussels Blockchain Week. From my son, I'm Dimitri, co-founder as well. And uh, we just wanted to say a brief word, so thank you. Uh, basically, the Brussels Blockchain Week is uh, two diff different things. The first one, you might want to talk about the week itself. Yeah, so um, that's what I'm saying. We're two different pillars, and the week is going to be the full week where we really wanted to, so let's say, Brussels vibrating to the rhythm of the blockchain. So with this regards, we have roughly 15 events around the city, and we are covering pretty much several kind of topics, going from arts, DeFi, uh, but yeah, NFT, uh, sustainability, tokenization on real estate, and these kind of different uh, topics. And um, yeah, it's been two years that um, we still we have founded the, 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 the conference, and really happy to be here in the first day of the, the week. And then the second pillar, just jumping in, is uh, we organize a two-day conference at the Merode, which is more going to be focused on, on the regulation within the, the field of blockchain. So we're gathering the European Commission and the Parliament as well. And then also uh, specific uh, utilities like uh, tokenization of real estate. So there's still a couple of invites left, so feel free to send us an email if you're interested, and we'll be very happy to, to, uh, to send you one. And then uh, thanks again. Uh, to Mario and to Cloud7 for organizing this event. For us, it's, it's essential to also help people understand what blockchain can do, what NFTs can do, and this is a perfect example of, of one of those events. Thank you very much. So, uh, so, so uh, now the, uh, the floor will be very shortly to our uh, distinguished uh, panelists. So uh, I will tell you a little bit uh, how, we, uh, how I kind of curated the uh, The, uh, the evening. Uh, first, uh, the first ones to, uh, to speak will be the uh, artists uh, that I've uh, known for the uh, longest time uh, here because they are in my, uh, in my collection and we've uh, known them for, for, uh, for several uh, years and they've recently uh, made their first uh, NFTs. So, so I thought that their uh, experience would be very uh, valuable. They have an exhibition uh, in Namur, which is, which is finishing now, right, in a few days or something? Yeah. Or? June 11th. June 11th, so you still have uh, a, few, uh, a week, the blockchain week to, uh, <laughs> the blockchain week to, uh, to, uh, to see it. Huh? They will uh, talk about their, uh, their project, but they will also give us a, a little, uh, a brief, uh, how would I say, back to the, uh, back, uh, they will go back a little bit in the uh, past to, uh, to speak about uh, transactions in general and about uh, immaterial uh, artworks before there was the, uh, the blockchain and before there was uh, 
they were uh, before immaterial uh, works became more uh, more successful. Then uh, Olivier uh, Marion will be uh, will have more the uh, will use his uh, engineering and his business uh, background as a uh, co-founder of Arteya, which is also a uh, a, uh, a friend uh, that I have on my uh, on my computer and my and my phone every uh, every day because this is the uh, it is the, the management uh, the, the, uh, the collection management system that I use uh, to uh, to keep track uh, of my uh, of my works. But he has there is another aspect that he's developing to keep track of uh, of, of the works not only on uh, on one's computer but also to really keep track. Uh, of them at the same time, uh, physically and digitally, so. and uh, and he will, uh, I think, be, it will be very interesting to, to listen to him, to uh, to make us understand better what are the implications of the physical and digital uh, aspect of uh, of the blockchain of tokenization and and, uh, and all this. So. Uh, then we'll uh, give the uh, we'll give the. Uh, the floor to uh, Najat, who is uh, who is a uh, at the same time a uh, a photographer, a visual artist, but he also uh, he also has a life outside of uh, of art when he calls it himself uh, Gilles, <laughs> and uh, and as a uh, he has an, a, an experience of uh, with uh, with cryptocurrency, and so he will tell us how as an artist uh, he can uh, he can. Uh, uh, Use both a uh, a, uh, a physical uh, platform to uh, to sell his uh, his photos and also a uh, a digital uh, platform. And then the uh, the last one will uh, uh, wrap up uh, hopefully uh, everything and, and make it uh, even more uh, concrete. Is uh, Thomas de Ben, who is uh, a uh, who is a uh, digital art uh, consultant specialist. Uh, who is going to uh, to tell us how he helps uh, dig uh, artists uh, create uh, their uh, their digital works, and how he uh, he can also help uh, Garist. Thank you very much to a distinguished uh, Garist in the uh, in the audience and collectors to uh, to uh, to uh, present uh, and to uh, and to keep uh, their uh, their newly acquired NFTs. Uh, on a uh, dig digital wallet. When he when he speaks, he will also give to uh, to each uh, each of you a, a little uh, card, which will be which, which will give you all the instructions uh, to create your uh, your own digital wallet if you don't have one. And uh, while we are uh, uh, talking now, there is uh, Rocco Manta, who is a uh, visual artist who uh, scanned your uh, your buddies who is going to, uh, to create his own uh, original uh, NFT, which will be uh, mixed uh, with some uh, sound uh, from Nida, who is the, uh, the young uh, singer who is rehearsing, uh, who rehearsed, and uh, now she's, she's ready to, uh, to play uh, upstairs because at, at every La Mariotte event, uh, there is uh, also a, uh, a great uh, music performance after, and so this time the music performance will uh, Will be linked to, uh, will be recorded on an NFT, and you will all be, be able to keep the, uh, the NFT with you. And uh, when you go, uh, when you go back, uh, back home. So, David and Stephanie, the floor is, uh, is yours. Thank you very much, Jean. Thank you very much, Jean. conceptual artist and we work together since uh, I guess 17 years and we are living between Paris and Luxembourg and so um, we are, yep, as um, Frédéric told, uh, told you we are in the collection is we work on a very um, uh, invisible work and a non uh, immaterial? immaterial work sorry <laughs> but you can see um, we are conceptual artists, but we are also uh, storytellers. 
we, we like the fact that uh, the form and the content is uh, goes pretty equal. So um, we've been interested in um, in stories and in materials, but uh, in this case, we would like to talk to you about the transactions. Transactions uh, has been in uh, art histories for decades now. So we think that like NFT art is pretty a misunderstanding. So in our work, like a certificate of authenticity has been there uh, forever. Uh, it has been used for Solenit, Lawrence Weiner. And in this case, you have um, a work from uh, Marcel Duchamp. Uh, it's a bond he created in a casino in uh, Monte Carlo. It's a great artwork, really uh, complicated to explain. So please feel free to, to go and check this, this artwork. But just to tell you, it's been made in 1925. So, uh, Transaction and art has been linked uh, for many, many, many times. Um, another one is a, a wink to collection of uh, Frederick de Goldschmidt because it's a piece from Russian band. Uh, this is a portrait of Iris Clerk, if I say so. Uh, the stamp uh, is uh, the certificate uh, of this uh, work. And uh, I said uh, it's a wink because uh, there's a Hommage from Mathieu Lorette, who did uh, this is a portrait of Frédéric de Rochmitz. No, of Ali Garobaldi. Ah, sorry, Ali Garobaldi. And um, it's been in the previous exactly. exhibit. Exactly. Right. So uh, <clears throat> there's also some contracts. And uh, in that case, we, Stephanie and me, made a contract about uh, the, the stability of the leather of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. So uh, feel free also to, to check the story because it's a very crazy story about uh, this, uh, this uh, letter. Uh, so the, in that case, we made a, uh, a contract for 30 years who uh, connect the collectors and the artists about the stability of this letter. This, uh, this letter is um, the symbol of the statu quo between all the uh, uh, different um, Christian group inside the Holy Sepulchre. And since, the, uh, since uh, now two, two centuries now, this leather is here and never, never been removed from there. If it's removed, it seems that it's a breakup of the statue group. So everybody has the advantage to keep this leather there. So we make a kind of bet on the stability of, that, of this leather. So uh, we made a contract, so about the transaction, it could be also a contract. So, uh, for example, we met with, uh, um, uh, with Frederick this, this bet on 30 years. This is a part of the, of, the con of the contract made by a notary in Paris. And so it means that if in the next 30 years, if the letter is not removed from the Holy Sepulchre, we keep the money, the collectors keep the piece, and in case of removal of the uh, and the break of the statue quo, we break the uh, the artworks, we tear the the contract, and we pay back the collector. So it's a fragile stability, based on the contract and the transaction, based on a something not immaterial but very fragile in the in the real world. It's like a bet on history, something which uh, where we have no control. And uh, we depend on the really the big story. So this artwork does not exist if this small wooden ladder, which is represents a stability, but it's like a very fragile wooden ladder just on the earth. And so <laughs> the, the place of a happy collector who knows about uh, both, uh, very historical artworks. This is uh, at the notary. At so the notary office. So uh, all, uh, each time we. <laughs> Um, we make this bet with collectors. There's a ceremonial in the notary office in Paris with the lecture of the contract and we both parts got signed. Here there's also a transfer uh, uh, which shows the ladder on a, on a, a cinematic, sorry. A, 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 yeah, in Jerusalem. Meaning that this ladder is already in the, in the part of the city. In the parts of the city. So about uh, the question of transaction, so uh, we arrive in the NFT 
art, I would say, like this, uh, regarding an artwork we made uh, during, uh, if we made each in our sh uh, show. So in our show, all the artworks have the credits. And we put a text, an author wrote the text on each artwork. Uh, so it allowed to the, to the visitors to understand to the artworks, the situation, the context we made this artwork. So the, the, the credits are an artwork itself because all the, the graphic charts is the same chart as the propanolol uh, box. It's a beta blocker for people who have uh, uh, angst crisis, nervous breakdown, or a broken heart. So uh, we use the same, each time the same uh, graphic chart for all our artworks in, in show. So um, regarding that, um, we sell in NFTs the, the history of the artworks. It doesn't mean the physical work, but the history of the artworks. So this the series is called I'm All Tomorrow's Broken Arts, and in our OpenSea page you can have a large panel of artworks, but just the story, and you can buy the story in <coughs> NFT. So it means that when the show is finished and you remove the label from the um, from the wall, the artwork is still alive because it's it's, it's still uh, be visible and readable uh, through the, our uh, Open uh, OpenSea uh, platform. So. And it yeah. waits until there's another exhibition, then it goes back on the wall. We believe that it stays, uh, has a immaterial um, work yeah. in between two uh, shows. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the collectors, some collectors can just own the story and not the physical work. But sometimes that people just prefer uh, conceptual work just by the story or the context or just the, the poetic part of the artwork and they don't care about the physical pieces. So each person can choose whatever they want. We have example of one yeah. who has um, the immaterial work and also the physical work. <coughs> Meaning that they, they, they want the story as well. And uh, This is a, a stainless uh, steel uh, table. It's a, drug consumption table, so it means that it's the table where I used in the uh, drugs injection center, and uh, so it's a series are ongoing, and uh, this one is called the Mirror of the Cloth because we, we put on it a black mirror, and the black mirror were used by the romantic painters to paint uh, when they turn back to the reality. So they use this, uh, this mirror to paint when they turn back to the, to the subject, so it makes all the surrounding more darker, and that's why we decided to put them on, on, on this table. And all the tables are were used, so we have an exchange system with the, the center, say we take the used table and we make, uh, create another one, so because we have a very, uh, for us the, the memory of the material is very important. We use this table because we thought uh, it feels, it looked like uh, somewhere where you, you would be uh, as a, um, doing makeup and that the the mirror is not uh, reflecting uh, you like in this piece it just rejects your image um, yes for for the the nfts where we have been uh, working uh, previously we had the physical work next to it in this uh, in this work we have been uh, uh, we have written the story before doing the artwork. That's where it's uh, said unrealized in situ uh, installation. So there's something that is going to be uh, uh, no, it's it's it will be realized in the next future. So the work is um, with a poem. He's a beatmaker from the Funky Family. Uh, he has charcoal disease since. Uh, 2015, and he only communicates with his eyes uh, on a device. Um, we have been working with him uh, and having a conversation where he could um, answer only uh, with his eyes on the device, and we recorded the movement of, uh, of the eye. Um, this idea, we wanted, to, we wanted to bring this message, what he told us, in a monu monumental um, way, so the lighthouse uh, seemed a good way. So 
the light will um, represent uh, this sentence, this message, um, so every day. Every day, at a specific hour, the, the light also wake up and reproduce with the light that is the, the, the movement of the eyes of Paul when he give us this. Uh, it's a message of resilience and, and brave, very brave because it's very complicated for when you have Charcot disease to do things and he already wrote written uh, four books. Uh, he composed com music with his eyes, he can play chess. He's a he's an amazing person and the, the, why uh, the NFT is important is because everybody said, yeah, but this is conceptual, we don't understand the movement, there's like a code. But the thing is, if this story uh, is shared, if everybody understands it, then even if it's not written in the sky exactly what he said, the, the, the story is still alive, the story is still alive and it, it will spread and this message will be known. Because sometimes the code is uh, even clearer than just a sentence. This is the test, so it's not, it's not yet on the light app. Um, this is an, another uh, ongoing project, and that's why we really uh, love this uh, <coughs> material way of uh, expressing our art, because in this, um, in this work, we have been training a dog, research dog, uh, to find um, a, a lost, canvas. A lost a uh, canvas. Yeah, a looted painting. Yeah. Uh, but we have been, sorry. No, no, no. no, no. Go ahead. No, so in, in that case, um, so we, we were interested in a, in a Peter class painting we were looted in Warsaw uh, during the World War II. And uh, the, this canvas never, this painting never reappeared. And so we decided to, to train the dog to try to find back the canvas with the smelling representation of the painting. So for, for six months we worked with an olfactive designer and tried to reproduce the exact uh, smell and odors of all the components of the of the canvas, and so there was a lemon, an olive, a white wine, and hard bread, and so it was very complicated because uh, where were the where come from the lemon, where come from the the olive, and so it was a very long long research, and so six uh, you know one year, the uh, the a dog called Leo. Uh, app is in is in mind. Uh, the moment he never he never encounter it means that he he, he look he look he search a uh, memory of something he never met, and so it's and, uh, that, and that doesn't exist. So it's particularly conceptual. That's the thing. That's the fact. And so we we train the we train the dog and we make some a lot of uh, so in, in the brain of the dog there's a last representation of the of this painting because there's only one picture of it existing. So this project is ongoing. So, for example, in that in that case, we will make the research in the uh, in the Freeport in Luxembourg. Uh, so we cool. research in all the uh, in all the vault of uh, and so some some specific places. We have to uh, to go to Warsaw with them, and uh, also in a, uh, a place where uh, uh, in the Netherlands, not Amsterdam. Uh, of, no, it's, a, well, it's a town of Harlem. Uh, Harlem. And uh, so we made a solid patch with. Uh, so, and this process is ongoing. So, the, the NFT of, the, of the, uh, this artwork plays the situation. And perhaps if we made it after, it would, would also explain the, final, the, the, the finality of the artwork. So, it's, for the moment, it's not the case. So, the NFT is just tr the trace of an ongoing process. Yeah, we've been adding a uh, new uh, smell because uh, we, we did a conference like this and everybody's like, yeah, but uh, we're missing the smell of the, the studio. So we are adding uh, turpentine. Oh. There's a uh, really, it's uh, ongoing uh, um, training. Oh, sorry. I think that your time is... Uh, yes? Okay, so that's <laughs> okay. Uh, what you do, said. It's Namur. This is uh, the show that you can actually, actually see in... Uh, until June 11. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>
have to be more, co more concrete. Huh? <laughs> but, uh, Unfortunately, I'm very sorry. It's going to be much, much less artistic. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm very happy, uh, Frédéric, to be, to be here. I'm going to try to explain a little bit what we, what we do in Artea and uh, our vision of what is uh, NFTs, blockchain, and how it interacts with art. Um, while... Ah, okay. Yeah, it's not... Uh... Perfect. Yeah, okay, thanks. I can come back if I press left. Okay, so um, Artea Solution, I created Artea uh, seven years ago. I'm a computer engineer, uh, so I like all this technical stuff. And uh, at the same time, I grew in a, in a family of co art collectors, and so we created a solution which uh, uh, Frédéric uses for, for collection management system uh, as a starter, and then we uh, when we started interacting with the art ecosystem, we saw all the digitize uh, the, the, the the needs of, of uh, digitization in this uh, in this uh, ecosystem. So, very briefly, um, the art market. Most of those is not important. Uh, the important thing is that we believe uh, when we see uh, the art ecosystem as a, uh, a market, which it is uh, very much also, uh, we see the need of efficiency and liquidity and uh, transparency and trust. And uh, when we, we go in the, the, the other slide, we will see that uh, um, liquidity, efficiency, of course, we, we, we think about digitization and digital transactions. And the blockchain is perfect for transparency and trust. It's uh, the basis of the idea of blockchain. Um, I don't know exactly what is the level of knowledge about all of you. Do you know how, how many own, uh, how many people own NFTs in the room? Okay, one third about, okay. Okay, so that's good. So I, I, I'm still a little irrelevant. So uh, very briefly, this is what we do in Artea. So we do a collection management system. So the idea is to have all digitized on your computer, uh, all the information about your, your artworks. Uh, we work with collectors, but we work very much also with artists. Um, we also uh, created uh, some uh, online viewing rooms. So this increased a lot uh, during the COVID because people were not allowed to go physically in, uh, in uh, galleries. So you had to much more, uh, the, the art galleries had to much more think about going online, which was not so obvious five years ago uh, for a lot of galleries. And so we do a lot of, uh, for, for Templon Gallery, for example, we did the first uh, online digital catalogue raisonné uh, secured on the blockchain. What does it mean? Catalogue raisonné is uh, usually the list of um, uh, recognized by the artists or the estate artworks that were created by the art artist. So for example, if uh, you want to sell a Picasso, uh, you not only have to prove that your Picasso is, is a, a real one, but you have to try to prove that this artwork exists in the history of the artist. And so Picasso worked for a very long time, all his life, uh, with a guy named Zervos, and they created the, what, we, what we call today the Zervos. It's 33 books, and it's, the, the, it's 16,000 uh, images in black and white, which is very sad for such an important artist, of uh, paintings and drawings from Picasso, and this is the least recognized list of what artwork are recognized by the estate. Uh, so it's quite important to have, of course, something digital, in, uh, on, uh, instead of a book, which is uh, 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 not very useful as soon as an artist starts again creating, or even if artworks are uh, on a loan in a museum or something like this. So uh, provenance, exhibition, literature, which are important things about an artwork, they are not updated, so we do this uh, digitally. And today, uh, the focus is much more on uh, authentication and linking the physical and digital. Uh, the idea is that um, I grew in a, in a family of, I would say, traditional uh, art collectors. So uh, digital art is, has been there for quite a while. And in fact, if you think about all the photographs and all the video artists, uh, we can definitely say that those people are digital artists. Uh, Bill Viola, if you take a, uh, an artwork from Bill Viola, uh, you will receive a DVD with a file on it. And so you will show this on a, on a TV screen. Um, if you try to resell it, 
uh, the important part is not the DVD. It's the certificate of authenticity and the certificate of ownership. And so the certificate of authenticity, most of the time it's a paper, and the certificate of ownership, it's gonna be, for example, the invoice uh, from the gallery or the auction house. And this is the proof that the DVD that you bring uh, to Christie's or Sotheby's or whatever uh, other way of selling your art is, uh, is, is one that is a recognized edition, a true edition that has value. And so in some point of view, and it's interesting when we think about NFTs, which are digital certificate of ownership, the, the certificate of ownership has more financial value than the artwork itself. The DVD with the, the copy of the Bill Viola file has not much value in itself, but if you can prove that you are the owner of a true edition, then it has value. Uh, so what we do uh, at Arteria is we kind of work on, on this idea. So today, uh, if you go in a gallery and you buy a painting, you will go out on, on one hand, you will have the painting, and on the other hand, hopefully, not always, you will have a paper certificate of authenticity. Uh, this paper can be lost, you can have a fake certificate, and it's not related to the artwork. I mean, there's no direct link to the artwork. So you can have a true certificate and a fake artwork. So first thing we did is we digitized the certificate of authenticity, which is kind of obvious. You create a digital file, and then you want to make it secure. So this is one of the good points of blockchain. It's very, uh, very good for this. So it's kind of a digital safe. Everybody can look and check that you have uh, a good copy of what is in the safe, in the digital safe, which is the blockchain, and nobody can tamper with it, and you have digital signature, a a anything you want. So we create first this digital certificate of authenticity, and then we want to link it to the artwork, and for this we use uh, NFC chip, which is a, a little sticker. It's uh, the size of uh, a little uh, piece of 50 cents, uh, and we put this on the artwork. So, what am I missing? Uh, Olivier, yes. For the two thirds of the audience who do not own an NFT, maybe you can have a quick kind of uh, vocabulary ah, yeah, okay. definition. Of, okay, so uh, sorry, this is not an NFT. This is an NFC. So, NFC is near field communication. So, this is the little chip that you have in your credit card when you're making a contactless payment. And so the idea is that with this little chip, uh, so in the sticker, in fact, you're going to have a little chip with a little data in it. And when you come with a smartphone, you come close to it, and you will be able to read the data. And our tag is secure physically, so if you try to remove it, it's going to break. So people will see that somebody tried to tamper, for example, take it from the real artwork and try to put it on a fake one. It doesn't work. It breaks. And then it's secure uh, digitally. Uh, we have a special way of encrypting all the information. And we can prove that it's impossible to make a second tag, which is the same as the first one. So what we have, we have the digital certificate. It's on the blockchain. So it's the perfect. Blockchain, the definition of the blockchain. For those who are OK, blockchain, uh, I tried not to. No, no, it's very good. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Blockchain, I try not to be technical. You can see those guys if you want to get technical this week. Uh, the idea is for me is uh, really a safe where you put a copy of an information. So here, th there are a lot of usages of blockchain. What, uh, for, for us, blockchain is a safe to, put, uh, to guarantee that the information you read somewhere is the good information. It was the information that was written by the artist in this example, or the gallery that is issuing the certificate. So, you digitize uh, the, the information and you put it in a very safe place where everybody can look at it, verify that this information is uh, safe, is, is correct, is exactly the same that you have, and nobody can go inside the safe and modify the information. I don't know if it's clear. Kind of okay? Maybe a few words on the different blockchains and the different uh, users. Okay. Uh, <laughs> a little bit. No, no, no. So historically, uh, those guys will be much better than me, but historically, you Thomas have... will go back to it, but maybe Okay, so we, we had, uh, <coughs> I believe the first blockchain that you heard about probably was Bitcoin. Uh, so Bitcoin was a, a blockchain that was used basically to exchange value. Uh, so you had token, you, yeah, you kind of can have money or, let's say it's money, it's just 
uh, transaction on, on Bitcoin is just I have one Bitcoin and I send it to somebody else. So you, you have the transaction from one user to another, one wallet to another wallet. Uh, then we have a lot of other blockchains that I believe there are infinite number of blockchains and you will develop different blockchains depending on the usage that we want of this technology. One of the most uh, uh, known other blockchain is Ethereum. The big va value of Ethereum compared to, to Bitcoin is the use of what we call smart contracts. So it's kind of a program or intelligence. Uh, so you can do something, for example, I will send this amount of money from this account to this account if the level of this account is below or above uh, this. So you, you can introduce some kind of logic and you can write those kind of computer program which are themselves on the blockchain so they are very secure and once they are started nobody can tamper with them. Um, the, the, very briefly, uh, the, the, the problem of uh, this uh, blockchain at the beginning was recently the cost of running those blockchains so it means a lot of electricity uh, to, to work uh, all those computers. So basically a blockchain is a, is a network of thousands of computers all around the world of the world, sorry, linked by internet and you have to provide a lot of electricity to make this work and now we have uh, some interesting either other blockchains like Tezos that we use, so Tezos is, is known as a, the green blockchain because the, the cost of running this blockchain is much lower than Ethereum was before, but there was an, a recent update in Ethereum that lowered the cost of this, so basically a lot of the, it's, it's a huge uh, subject, so uh, I try to keep it on the side and say it's just the technology that provides the, the guarantee that this data is not, uh, uh, is tamper-proof. Nobody can tamper with this data. Sorry, I lost half of the room with this. Uh, okay, so what we do uh, with our solution, so we create a digital certificate of authenticity, so uh, just instead of having a paper that you do in, in Word uh, on your computer, you create the same uh, data, you put it in a digital file, and we kind of put a copy of this, this digital file in a, in a blockchain. We associate uh, this uh, kind of file on the computer to the NFC chip. Uh, we fix the chip on the artwork, and boom, uh, it's done. So what does it mean? It means, for example, that uh, if I buy this artwork in a gallery, uh, all, for all the, the, the life of the artwork, uh, I'm talking about physical artwork, of course, uh, I will be able to just uh, approach the artwork, scan the, the chip, and I will get all the information that I want on this artwork. So, the, 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 of course, uh, the artist, uh, an official picture, the dimensions, the description, whatever, and we can add a lot of information, we can add um, uh, we can update provenance, exhibition, literature, we can uh, have a contract. Uh, there are a lot of uh, galleries today that try to, uh, to uh, bind you with a contract about the, the, the right for you to resell or not the artwork. So if I go to uh, I mean Reich Gallery and I buy something, uh, I have to sign a paper that says I am not allowed to resell this artwork within three years. Uh, besides going to Almin Garage Gallery. I cannot go to Sotheby's or Christie's and resell it before going to this. So it's kind of a contract that they are trying to bind to the, 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 the sale of the artwork and we could uh, do this inside the, the, the chip so everything is linked to the physical artwork. Uh, this is an example of what we did for Peter Ali in uh, Marwani Mercier. So this is the chip on the on the canvas, so of course we don't put it on front of the, of the, of the artwork to, to not uh, uh, damage the artwork, we'll put it on the back, and, but we want to put it on the artwork itself and not on the wood because of course it would be too easy to remove the uh, uh, canvas from the wood. Um, here are other examples, we work with a company which is called Sculptures, they create uh, physical 3D prints for digital artists, so uh, special editions. And so in the, in the bottom of this uh, hidden, there's a, our chip is embedded. It works through materials, almost one centimeter of material. So you can really hide the chip inside the object if it's uh, created at the, at the beginning. So these are other editions that we made. 
Uh, we have the first uh, NFC chip inside the Musée du Louvre. Uh, we worked with the uh, artist Stéphane Brauer, and so on the back of uh, this artwork, which was um, ordered by the, the collection du Musée du Louvre, there is a chip uh, proving its authenticity. So we are quite uh, happy with this. Uh, this is another example for uh, Benjamin. Um, we created uh, paper prints, so print editions of his artwork. Uh, he's a, a street art, uh, pop art uh, artist, and uh, he creates uh, um, oil on canva uh, artworks. We created a series of physical artworks like this, and we sold them as NFTs. So the certificate of ownership was an NFT sold on uh, Tezos uh, blockchain. Um, and the idea was that when you buy this NFT, which was which is for me a certificate of ownership of something in the metadata of the NFT. And I will try to explain this. Uh, in, so in the description, so an NFT for me is a certificate of ownership. It's a digital certificate of ownership. And so on the digital, on a certificate of ownership, being paper or digital, what you do is you describe what you are owning. Okay, so usually it's the name of the artist, uh, the name of the artwork, the year, the description, anything. So we put this in a digital thing, which is an NFT. And when you buy this, you were able just to contact the gallery and say, OK, I can prove that I am the owner of this NFT, so please send me the physical artwork. So we did this. Um, of course, it's very interesting also, not only for art, but maybe it's not the subject today. Um, so the good thing about this is that we are kind of uh, putting a bridge between physical and digital. So uh, either for digital artists, they want to make some physical editions. For example, I'm an old fashioned man. And so, so uh, I'd like to have at least when I, I do own some NFTs and I, I, I would love to have something on my wall to put. So maybe a paper print or physical uh, 3D edition. And so this is a solution to make this and to be sure that you have uh, a limited uh, number of, uh, of physical editions, and it is also the opening for uh, for metaverse uh, ideas. So when you buy uh, when you buy a, a, an artwork or a, a sneakers, uh, you can get a digital edition of it, and you could you could put it in your video game or in your next uh, next version of metaverse. Uh, another subject. Who knows what is a metaverse? Next time. Next time. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Your time is, up. Uh, time is on over. Okay, so this is purely for my ego. It doesn't matter. And uh, uh, blockchain. So yeah, blockchain in art for us it's transparency and trust. It's the the, the main message about blockchain. Uh, it gives you. It's a very nice tool to use. Uh, thank you. You can reach me next. <laughs> Uh, when there is a change of ownership, you know, you've got the NFC that is at the back of the canvas mm -hmm. of the painting, let's say. Yeah. So it's not, you, you, cannot, you cannot change anything no. on that NFT. So it means that at each change of ownership, there will be a different NFC. No, no, because we talk, about, we, we talk about authenticity. So the NFC is a certificate of authenticity of the artwork. And we don't talk about ownership because we believe the artwork is not ready to be transparent about ownership. Okay. So ownership is, we, we don't deal with it, uh, com uh, it's different from NFTs where you kind of have a trace, but we know when, when you deal a little bit with NFTs, you know very soon that you don't have any trace because it's very easy to, to hide uh, really the, who is the owner of a wallet and, and make a lot of transactions to lose, to lose people. So we are talking about authenticity, not right. uh, okay. ownership. And also, so also when it's sold, sold, you don't have like a percentage for the artist. Not at all. Not at all. We are we are just trying to change the the current state uh, of uh, how uh, transparency and trust is is made in the art market. We believe it's very poor <laughs> to have paper certificates, and we believe it's good to try to change a little bit. But but now thanks. To <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you will you will uh, know. How an artist can uh, really uh, make a, make a, an NFT and make a smart contract out of his own uh, creations. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, glad to be here. Thank you to Kurt and, and Mesh for this opportunity. 
My name is Jared Gervaler. Uh, I'm a visual artist uh, based in Brussels. I'm a Cameroonian photographer. And uh, my work is around um, uh, poetry. It's, um, it's a work on a black man in the model, uh, in, the, in the modern uh, society, actually. And uh, yes. yes. Yeah, this is uh, this is my first series um, that I called uh, in English uh, que les paraître in French, but uh, what I up here, um, this, the, the message was around uh, um, social social media, um, you know, because it was um, it was uh, thinking uh, of how we can be someone else in uh, in our social media. Sometimes. In life, we are someone, and in the social media, we are someone else. And I, yes, I, I use the, the tools of social media, the, the phone, to um, to make um, to let appear the real us. Yeah. Uh, this is this was the first step um, into the numer the digital world for me, because um, uh, first I was I was really not uh, on um, how can I say that. I was really, really not. Um, je n'étais pas. Je, je ne connaissais pas les NFT. First, I was not uh, in touch with uh, with the block, with the world of blockchain and, and everything. And uh, in this time, I was just curious about new technology and new ways to uh, to grow my art and stuff. And actually, after this project, um, I start I start question myself about. Um, New, new, uh, new, te new, new technologies and uh, new ways to, um, yes, to, yeah, to grow, to grow it. And um, I, I discover uh, cryptocurrencies because I was starting in Brest and, and I was starting um, you know, grow my, also my um, my portfolio, my wallet. And um, by discovering that world, um, I, I, uh, I also start. Um, I also, I also start um, question. Uh, J'ai commencé à me questionner sur um, sur les différentes crypto monnaies, different different cryptocurrencies linked uh, to art. And then um, I discovered. Uh, start, uh, first, I, I start buying Bitcoin and stuff, and then I discovered uh, discovered some other things. And after that, yeah. after that, um, it was um, it was interesting for me to ask myself how can I uh, how can I create a link between me and my client by just um, said something that proved that uh, they have the, the the authenticity of what I did without maybe have the physical pieces. And then I um, I experienced it. I experienced it through uh, different blockchain, Ethereum and Tezos and stuff. And then um, I start put online pictures first to experience it, and uh, after to uh, authentic to prove the authenticity of things. And um, yes, as an artist, it was uh, it was uh, an interesting. Uh, Process because um, I was just aware of the the, the real world and the, uh, the relationship with Gary and stuff, and there it was um, it was the, the opportunity for me to to be uh, directly linked for my with my uh, with my collection. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, the work from uh, Trevor in Cameroon. Yeah. Then, um, if I can, if I can, uh, if I can, as uh, I can say something is that uh, as an artist, um, NFTs can be used for for selling normally, and also when you are a, col a collector, you buy you buy art, and um, you don't have uh, you buy it, you sell you sell it after you don't have the. Um, Vous n'avez pas la suite des, des, des événements. 
Après, after that, you cannot, um, you cannot uh, touch some uh, uh, royalties on your art in the time. And there, uh, me, I decide actually to uh, to give the royalties of every people, every uh, every collector that we do our work, because I was uh, I, I find it interesting to just say, okay, it's not just a relation of sell and, and buy, it's also also a relation of royalties and people who, who can trust on what you do actually. Thank you. But uh, wait, wait. <laughs> 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 what you did not uh, say, eh? and you told me when we, uh, when we met uh, a few weeks ago, is that you uh, sell your works in, in two different forms. Huh? Yes. And I think that this is uh, important yes. to, to say that, uh, that certain works can be printed, some works are only live in the uh, digital world. How do you uh, decide what is going to be, uh, to, be, to, to, to be printed in addition, what is never going to be to be uh, additional, and do you see do you see a difference in the way you work in the, yeah. in, the, in both different uh, different worlds? And and when you said that uh, that you uh, started uh, also uh, buying some uh, some cryptocurrency, did the fact that you were already uh, used to this uh, to this world did it help you uh, position your uh, your your art in the uh, in the world of NFTs. Uh, actually, uh, you have you have to uh, when you discover this world of uh, NFTs and cryptocurrencies, you, you realize that you have two different big worlds actually. And uh, for me, the first step was just to, to create a link between both. And um, I didn't really um, I didn't really uh, decide I, I, uh, actually if this one will be online and this one will not be online. But um, why, uh, how I use actually blockchain for, 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 my, for my art is to, um, to educate, to educate, uh, to edu to educate um, people who bought, who bought uh, like I, when you, when you bought this, I, I make a surprise actually. I didn't tell you that, okay, you will have an NFT. I make a surprise. And then in a ledger keys, a ledger keys is a, it's a physical wallet. I put the NFT inside. And when, you, when I make the delivery, um, I took two hours or more if you need to explain you actually what you have more. And then um, also um, there is, there is that's, it, that's the first step, but there is too much thing that you can do. Uh, in the future, I plan actually to, in the project that I talked in the, for, for Cameroon here, um, the project is to go in Cameroon. You know, there is, um, there is different, uh, different, uh, how can I say that? On different place, you have um, some, Vous avez certains, vous avez, vous avez certaines, uh, certains endroits où la terre est différente par rapport à d'autres. Okay. Et à certains endroits, il euh, y a ce que j'appelle les travailleurs de la terre. Uh, at that place, uh, for those people, I, I wanted to help them, um, to help them uh, to keep, to keep the heart alive by making a, an NFT project, where if you buy an NFT. You have the, that, percentage, uh, that percentage of uh, realities that can go directly to them. And uh, that's also an, another uh, a kind of another way to, uh, to, to use it, to use the blockchain uh, for, yes, for that. I don't know if I answer your question or... More or less, but I think that Thomas will, uh, okay. will tell us a lot about, uh, will be able to answer it with more, with more details. Good evening. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm Thomas. Um, yeah. What do I do um, at Plus One Gallery in Antwerp? I take care of all uh, digital-related projects. Um, it's interesting to see how blockchain technology can fit the the artistic practice um, uh, inside of the the context of a traditional uh, art gallery. Um, 
next to that, we, we've noticed that there's a lot of uh, opportunities uh, also outside the traditional uh, uh, white cube gallery context. Um, so we started Artist Proof Studio for all kind of uh, collabs, uh, projects for uh, uh, emerging technology, Web3, storytelling and integrations. Um, and then um, as a third uh, uh, pillar, um, we are also uh, a co-organizer from the Web32 event. Um, that isn't only for the art industry, it's like a cross-industry network event uh, for all things about Web3, NFTs and the metaverse. Um, and it's something that we find really important uh, to do, the, the cross-industry um, collaborations and uh, yeah, how do you say it in English? Uh, finger on the pulse, how it is? Uh, I don't know. Um, but um, it's important because this technology is not only something that affects um, our own industry, and um, our industry is used to, to keep all things inside their own uh, uh, industry. So yeah, it's important that we uh, look beyond our own context. Um, so I'm going to show a few cases that we worked on. Um, mostly hybrid uh, cases uh, where we uh, combine the digital and the, the, the physical. Um, the first one is with uh, Timothy Segers, an artist from Antwerp. Um, he makes big sculptures um, and he came to us um, with a brief um, to, to create a solution on the offering of his uh, sketches uh, from his sculptures because yeah, in, in some cases uh, sculpture artists uh, will offer their physical sketches uh, to their collectors um, to create ambassadors to spread um, their work because not everyone can afford uh, such a big sculpture um, but in this case um, you can see over here it's like a really high-end production um, yeah he, he, he makes everything uh, from sketch to, to blueprint on his iPad so he, he does not have like the, the, the sexy paper drawings uh, framed to hang on the wall. Um, so he asked us to create a solution. Uh, and he heard from NFTs, but uh, he didn't know how it worked. Um, but another problem um, in creating NFTs for him is that he wasn't a crypto native. Um, his uh, uh, audience isn't the, the NFT native uh, audience. So he's, yeah, his work circulates in a traditional environment. Um, I'm gonna skip this for a moment. Um, so what we, did we do? We created a, a script to pre-generate uh, crypto wallets. Um, it's like, yeah, a little bit lower the threshold uh, for <laughs> traditional collectors uh, to onboard in the web free space. Um, there's like a, a scratch layer here uh, with the, the secret uh, seed phrase. It's like the, the, the login code for your wallet um, and the QR code with a, with a one pager uh, telling you what's an NFT, how do I use it. Um, and then we printed it on like this uh, format of, of like credit cards and put it in a screen printed box because yeah, we received a lot of feedback from collectors yeah, that's cool, NFTs, but it's like, I can't touch it, it's uh, intangible, it's abstract for a lot of uh, people in the traditional scene. Um, so we, we made it uh, tangible again and presented it in a format that they're familiar with. Um, and that's interesting. And you made some for us uh, tonight? Huh? Yeah, yeah, of and course, uh, I will uh, show it later on. Yes. Um, everybody will get uh, an empty wallet this evening. And uh, after the evening, uh, I'll airdrop an NFT uh, to it um, uh, based on the scans and the music. Um, so that was an interesting exercise um, to create a solution on, on the offering of his uh, sketches, the, the, uh, basically like uh, small blueprints from his sculptures. Um, then the next case is something yeah, uh, built on that idea was for a graphic design, uh, a graphic artist, uh, uh, Brecht van den Broeke. Um, we created like a small wooden sculpture based on one of his uh, main characters in his work um, and uh, created like a, a vending machine from a congress uh, so people can collect uh, yeah, small collectible of his work. Um, and it was based on the, on the same format but then uh, in a total different uh, branding and uh, 
idea. Um, it can also act as a solution for uh, events. A lot of creatives do live illustration or uh, uh, personalized things at events. Um, it's, it's always a, a lot of effort and, and a lot of energy. And um, yeah, after the, the, the moment, it's gone. So we can also use it to, to, to keep it alive afterwards and uh, yeah, like a sort of uh, um, uh, thing afterwards uh, to, to have as an, an uh, how do you say it, memory uh, barrier thing um, afterwards. And um, yeah, you keep the community of the event together. It's a little bit the concept of a co-op. Um, not going to talk much about it. Um, then we also work with Victor Verelst. Um, it's a, a Belgian-based artist, and a, a lot of his work is uh, integrated as wallpaper. Um, yeah, um, so we use NFTs as a solution to um, to provide it to collectors. Um, so the value of the work isn't the the paper on the wall; that's just the production cost. Um, but the, the true value is inside the NFT that holds the, the source file to, to reproduce it. Um, uh, for such kind of projects, we, we also add like, a, um, I think, three page long uh, NFT users agreement. Um, that's something that we think a lot of. Um, um, yeah, what, what's, what's the, the right kind of way to, to deal with the NFT? Uh, how do we can make it future proof? and yeah, I think all, all the, the legal stuff and the documentation that you add to the NFT and the way how the NFT is created is uh, uh, um, uh, even like, it's also important uh, next to the, the visual uh, aesthetics of it. Um, so for him it's a good solution. Um, in the past there, there, there were artists that um, create uh, contracts as an artwork to reproduce them. Um, but Victor is a young artist, and I think you're a child of your generation, so he uses the tools of today. Um, and it's uh, interesting also for the collectors to, to uh, be part of the future proof uh, in his work. Um, last year um, at Plus One Gallery, we created a group exhibition dedicated to um, uh, all kind of artists that uh, use uh, digital canvases, um, so it was some kind of yeah, NFT exhibition. Um, and yeah, my, my task was to educate the artists, um, create uh, the right kind of uh, NFTs and uh, manage the exhibition. Um, this was also Victor Borels' solo exhibition at the gallery. Um, the NFTs in this exhibition was quite interesting for the, the, the following reason. Um, every work uh, came as a physical art piece, but also had a, a digital twin, uh, an NFT, um, because the work of Victor is, is it are all fragments from his uh, big virtual world. Um, so, so all works are actually connected to, to one big digital virtual masterpiece. Um, and the interesting thing about it is that the NFT is, is, is a source file um, in case um, the work is damaged. You have everything that you need to, to uh, restore the work, um, but you can consume it in a traditional way. And then you have like the second layer that you can consume the artwork in, a, in other ways, like uh, in your virtual meeting room as a Zoom background, or you can uh, uh, project it, or um, maybe yeah, if you're a collector with a network with, uh, for institutions, you can um, uh, lend the work uh, digitally and uh, still keep the physical work uh, to present at your uh, house. So it's, it's cool how you can uh, play on different levels, and yeah, the fact that all the works are connected to each other in one big world. Um, uh, the NFT is just like the, the tool that binds all the collectors together to one community of the of his virtual city. And uh, that's uh, a nice idea about it. Um, then the next project, also with Victor, was at the Art, uh, Art Antwerp, is um, where we wasn't happy with the idea that he only had uh, one square meter to present an artwork. Um, 
that's like uh, yeah that's that's not a lot of, of space for a for a digital artist so we created a, a virtual copy of the boot and uh, presented the solo exhibition and uh, yeah uh, took uh, VR glasses with him and uh, yeah people ca could experience uh, uh, a solo exhibition um, inside the boot of the gallery um, yeah the, the the, the fun part about the project was that um, yeah, we, we talked to the, the people of the venue that organized uh, the event um, and they really liked it um, and then uh, the gallery director told them uh, okay that's fine next year we only need one square meter for the booth um, and then they were like uh, uh, yeah, laughing less because yeah, the, the venue earns their money on the square meters that you buy. So, <laughs> Um, then the, the Web32 event is uh, the creative network event for uh, all things uh, Web3, blockchain, NFT, uh, metaverse kind of projects. Um, it's a day with a lot of lectures, um, experiences, uh, showcases of artists and projects. Um, not only for the art industry, um, there were cases uh, from the diamond industry or uh, other industries that, that work with the technology. And it's interesting to, to participate in such kind of events because uh, you see what other industries are doing with the technology and um, what problems they have uh, in, in the, the, the phase that we're in right now and uh, vice versa. Um, so that was kind of interesting uh, to participate uh, on such kind of events um, because we as a gallery, we, we want to open up for partnerships um, we're users of the technology. Um, we're, we're not the company that, that built the technology ourselves. So it's interesting to to use those kind of events to to meet new people and to get inspired from each other. Um, so that was in a short presentation some of the projects that I worked on. I have. <laughs> questions uh, before we all kind of uh, sit on the panel and before you distribute the, uh, the cards. Something that uh, I think some uh, some people uh, are always uh, unclear about and that I think that you could maybe uh, help us on is to, uh, because first we are in the uh, blockchain retail, so I'm going to ask a little bit the same question as I asked Olivier really on how, how do you use uh, the blockchain, but, uh, and only the uh, the blockchain, and where where are the digital artworks uh, which uh, are uh, have an NFT certificate of identification? Mm -hmm. Where are they stored? Because I think that this is something which is very complex and which is a bit confusing yeah. for most people. Is 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 that some uh, the blockchain is used for something, but the digital mm -hmm. Artwork yeah. is not necessarily uh, yeah. There is a lot of misconception uh, about it. Yeah, I, I would like you to uh, um, to solve. All yeah, this. I, I think to explain it easily, you you have like a, a EPF, EPF, EPFS server uh, on the on the blockchain. It's a decentralized server. You can compare it with uh, something like uh, Dropbox, for instance. Um, Sorry if, if I'm uh, explain it in a really uh, easy way, um, but you can compare it with Dropbox, um, and the the digital asset is stored uh, on, on on that kind of server, and the NFT is like a, a, a receipt. <coughs> it's a proof of ownership that links uh, every time that you use it, if you use it in a Web3 uh, native way, um, to the server. So I think the main problem in the past is that if you um, distribute a, a digital file, you instantly make a copy. You do it by mail, USB stick, uh, you put it on social media, every time a copy is made of your source file. So you have like this uh, digital uh, uh, fragmentation of your file um, and in a world where ownership and authenticity is an important uh, thing, um, that's something difficult. And um, the, the solution of blockchain is that you can register the, the source file and the NFT always points to the same direction. So there is no copy that is made if you use it the, the right kind of way. Because today, 
it's still uh, sometimes the right way, sometimes it's, it's just a copy, so, um, but in, a, in an ideal future, it's, uh, yeah, it's used to the, the right kind of way. Could yeah. you say it uh, more concrete, like which tools you're using and which blockchain, like everything you do for this, this artist? What are you used like? Yeah, Where I, do you go to? I think it's, it depends on the type of project that you maybe, want to do. Maybe you, can, maybe you can describe what we are doing right now to give a, to, to give a simple... Uh, or the, one, the last one, maybe? <laughs> the last one. <laughs> like in, yeah. with what, For instance, what the tool did you use? To yeah, so for me, it's important that the, the smart contract where you create the NFT on is uh, the, the smart contract. Yeah. Also. yeah, smart contract. Um, where? Is, where? Um, is the the so you create the smart contract on the blockchain and you can um, add uh, some utility to the smart contract and under the smart contract, for instance, uh, smart contract uh, Thomas the Ben, um, and under the smart contract I deploy my token. So I tokenize my digital asset to an uh, NFT, and then each token gets a number under the contract. Um, yeah, but like really concrete, yeah. like where, which tool did you use to ah, create yeah. the contract? Um, for, for this one, uh, because I'm not a developer, so okay. I don't develop it from scratch. Um, we try to curate the right kind of tools that match the, the, the type of artist and how they can use it. Um, we use a lot of uh, Manifold. Uh, Manifold.xyz is a platform to create smart contracts and uh, tokens. Um, and it's marketplace independent because a lot of marketplaces have an all-in-one service. Um, but I think it's interesting to you know, manage your tokens and put them on the market are two different things, in my opinion. Um, so we use Manifold um, to, to create it. Um, and depending on the type of artwork, we, for instance, use OpenSea to do this, the, the sales part of it, um, or we, we do a, a classic transfer to uh, without a marketplace. If the, if the owner already has a, a wallet, you don't have to use a marketplace to transfer it if, if he buys it in a traditional way. So it really depends on the, on the project, but yeah, I have a list of different platforms and uh, what the benefits are of, of the platforms, I can share it afterwards if you... Maybe you can also uh, give us, again, a, a definition and then a practical uh, example of, uh, of minting, because minting is an important uh, mm -hmm. concept. This is how the, uh, the money is, is kind of what's created, and yeah. it is also how the, uh, the certificate is inscribed in this... Uh, yeah. Blockchain. So, for instance, to uh, for the uh, this project, or for the one, or for the example that we are uh, doing uh, uh, tonight, what uh, what was involved in order to uh, to uh, or what is is involved now in, in, in turning uh, what is being uh, made now with the uh, with the three uh, D uh, scanning that was done and, and to, to to turn them. Into the uh, the NFT that you will all be able to uh, to see on on, on each other's uh, phone later yeah. tonight. Yeah. Uh, for instance, um, for the, the project here tonight, um, I created a, a smart contract with Manifold, uh, the the platform, um, especially for for this occasion. Um, and then we're gonna create a token um, from the the artwork. So it's it will be a 3D scan uh, combined with audio. Um, the moment that you actually um, create it, uh, uh, the, do the registration on the blockchain network, uh, in this case Ethereum um, blockchain, um, then uh, that's the concept of, of minting, you, you do the registration and once you, you minted it, it's the, the registration is com I, it's like for real. Um, and uh, once you, you minted it, you can, uh, everybody can see on the blockchain the transaction that you did. Um, so that's the concept of minting it, um, and then you can choose to, to transfer it to somebody or uh, sell it uh, on a marketplace. Some marketplaces um, 
offered the solution to lazy minting, um, and in that concept, you you actually uh, offer it uh, already online without that it actually already is registered. And um, once somebody actually buys it, uh, uh, um, only then the the file gets minted. Um, but that's like a choice that you make as an artist because some collectors really want uh, uh, really check when it's registered um, because they find it important that it's like done correctly or the or soon as it created um, so but it really depends from project to project um, and we use for this project the ethereum blockchain um, because I, I like the blockchain the ethereum blockchain and because a lot of good um, uh, solutions and tooling uh, is built on the Ethereum blockchain, but I know that a lot of people use uh, Tezos, for instance, um, and I think a lot of uh, generative art um, is, is built on Tezos because it's also cheap to do the registration. Ethereum at some moments is uh, quite expensive uh, to do the registration. So you pay the gas fees for tonight on Ethereum for <laughs> everyone? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so now all the speakers are going to take their chairs and now face the uh, and now face the audience. Est-ce que pour euh, d'abord peut-être euh, à, à chacun des participants, mais peut-être l'un après l'autre, ou sinon, euh, ou sinon peut, euh, non pas de question de la, pas de, pas de question de la part de pour, euh, pour, 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 pour les artistes conceptuels, pour le pour le pour l'entrepreneur. Pour, pour, euh, <rire> euh, so, I, I had a question. You started to practice with uh, a, a third party, like the lawyer or the notaire, who yeah, wrote uh, um, wrote the condition of the, the contract. Of the, yeah, yeah. the contract. And after you created some piece with NFT, so without third party, trustless system. Mm -hmm. Is it? Uh, is it something that you want to continue? It is important to bypass the third party to authorize the transaction? Is it part of your practice now? No, it's more to the, about to, to selling NFT, the story. It's not a, when, when you have the NFT, you're not part of the contract. Mm -hmm. You have the story, so it's different. The, the, pur the purpose is different. So in that case, there's no problem to, to make it an NFT. So even a uh, country has a different kind of transaction, it the artwork itself, even if you made an NFT, it's more the story about this transaction. Okay. Not the Thank you. Question yes. yes. Uh, again, I guess a question for Jill. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I really like your work that you're showing here. And I want to know, uh, is that the Cameroon always your aspiration or is this something else? The Cameroon, you say? Yeah, the Cameroon, yeah. Uh, it's a part of my uh, experience, but uh, my first experience is human, actually. It's human, yeah. You, to explain that is because, like, um, I trust, like, um, we live in the century that we, f we forget the, the similarity between every human. And then I'm, first I'm working on the, um, on the black man, 
but in the future, in the yeah, in the end, I want to work on uh, on the things that I think every human has in in um, in common, in common, in common. Mm -hmm. yeah, in common. And for me, it's, uh, it's the shadow, actually. And uh, at the end of the story, um, the black man will become, we stay the black man, but now we see that it's a black man. That in the future, he will be like. Um, a human, but in a in a contre jour, en contre jour. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have a question for you as well. Uh, so I loved your work uh, too, and I was wondering, what's the story behind? I know this has nothing to do with NFTs, but maybe what's the story behind the flowers? Because you talked about the shadows, uh, humans, and everything. So what's the story behind the nature, maybe in your pictures? The flowers is a tool that I use to uh, to tell the, the fragility of the human, actually, of the, especially the man, because we also um, put the image of the, the strongest and the, the I can say immortality uh, through the man, but we forget that uh, he can also be uh, someone fragile and sensitive, and poet and poetry and everything, and also at the inverse, woman can be. Um, what um, and the strongest that we don't uh, define of her. Is the question about NFT this time? I, I, the <laughs> I want to go to yes, it's NFT. But NFT <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You talked about the, um, the problem, because I think it's interesting in the, in the art market, the transparency of where an artwork has been, and it's mm -hmm. all linked to that. But how is the NFC, how is it updated then? Is it updated because you talked about literature, but that's then linked to the NFT, which is linked to the NFC? So the, the first, we, we don't pretend to solve everything. We, we try to, to, to start with the starting point, which is the moment where the artwork leaves the artist or, or the gallery sometime. So establish at least the authenticity and the identity. And then the, it, it's possible uh, by the either the artist or the gallery, uh, they have access to an interface where they are able to update information, for example, provenance, exhibition, literature, which are, uh, if, if the artwork uh, is seen in, a, in an exhibition two years later, if they know that they are uh, sold by uh, the gallery uh, uh, to this uh, famous collector or to a museum, they are, will be able to update the, the digital passport that is linked to the NFC chip. So, so the NFC will not change, but the information that, uh, that is visible when you scan the NFC can be updated. And the idea about blockchain is that you will still always have the previous information. So instead of changing a record, you can add an addendum, uh, add new information, uh, which is, I believe, the, the, the quite interesting part about blockchain if you think at uh, a lot of artwork in the history, there were experts saying, at this moment we believe it is from this artist, then we have a new information, no, it's not from this artist. And usually the collector only sees the last <coughs> speaker, or the last uh, 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 information. It's, I, I believe it's very nice to see all the different levels. Maybe the, the information changed, but it's very important with the blockchain to see all the history of the information. The, my question is, that is Sorry, yeah. the, why do, don't you link the NFC to an NFT? For example, you, did, you, you, you bought the work at Armin Reich, yeah. and you cannot sell it for three years, then you want to sell it. Eh? But then it would be interesting to link it to an NFT that the artist could get a royalty on the, the profit you make as a collector. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so first, uh, uh, the royalty, it's, it's a right, it's in the law, it's already there. So, so the NFT didn't but invent it's, anything, it's, it's not always it's done, but it's, 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 it's in the law. Uh, it depends if it's uh, on Ocean House, they kind of do it, if it's a private gallery. Then. But uh, um, NFT, it's really nice idea. Okay, but it doesn't work always because you kind of said it when you said there are a lot of marketplaces and you are not obliged to use a marketplace to transfer ownership. So if I buy something, okay, the, 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 nice, the nice idea, I go to OpenSea, I buy an artwork, and then I resell it on OpenSea, perfect. Okay, the contract is there, the royalty is sent, I have the trace, I know how much it was resold, I know who was the first owner, who is the second owner. Most of the time, 
people don't like that much traceability about ownership. Uh, it's the fact in, in the, I would say, the traditional art world. And so they're going to make a transaction on the side, and they're going to just send even maybe on another platform, or they, they just send from one wallet to another wallet. There's no trace of this. Uh, well, on OpenSea, you can see that there has been a change of ownership, but you don't see for how much. You don't see uh, uh, who is it. So you just see that there, there was a change of ownership. You don't know if it's my cold wallet, and I just put what so. Uh, if I buy something on, 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 on uh, OpenSea, on Ethereum, um, the blockchain is great, but it's also very dangerous. So if I have a wallet, which is my, my uh, kind of a wallet, uh, so if I put money in my wallet, at some point, if I have a lot of money in my wallet, I will try to put this money in a safe. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing with my artworks on NFTs. The, the wallet that I use to connect to a website, which is kind of dangerous always, at some point, I will transfer my NFT to a, a, what we call a cold wallet or safe wallet. Okay, so somebody going to the OpenSea platform will think that I resell the, the artwork. In fact, it's just the same owner. It's just a change of location of the certificate of property. So it, the spirit is very nice, but in fact, th there's no real. Uh, following of, of ownership in, in even with the NFT. It's a little bit better if everybody was following the rules. It's, it's, it's not happening. <laughs> All the kind of rules. You can try to enforce. There are a lot of people trying to enforce things by, by saying, okay, well, you have to stay on the same platform. Or, and and what, is, which, what is funny is that often you have to come back to a written contract. And so you have to say, okay, when you buy this NFT, you are uh, uh, accepting this written contract that you will have, for example, to use the same platform to resell it or not to resell it for some time. So, and isn't we go that, back to the, to the real world. Isn't that put in the blockchain? Is, isn't, the, isn't the blockchain a ledger where you can follow all the transactions? And so basically, if you can figure out what the, the addresses were, you can always figure out who sold what, when? No, uh, there are a lot of ways to, 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 to avoid this. So as I told you, I may have 10 wallets and I can mm -hmm. simulate the fact that I resold the artwork for a lot of money and that the artwork is gaining value. In fact, it's just me playing with the game of, of, of the, the value of the artwork. And at some point I try to sell it to somebody trusting me. <laughs> uh, we could use physical uh, wallet, so I want to pretend that the artwork didn't change, but in fact I sold the information how to access my wallet to somebody in cash, and so I am no more the, the real owner, the, the, the real world owner of the wallet. The, the artwork is still in the same wallet, and in fact it changed of ownership. So it's, it's, it's nice, a lot of good ideas, a lot of people trying to go around the rules. So, and how does a smart contract work with that? So basically, a uh, smart contract is a software, and uh, and it, it works and interacts with the blockchain. So I don't know exactly what is your question, but it's well, if you if you sell um, a, a digital artwork or an NFT, they always talk about the fact that there is a smart contract that automatically, like. Includes no. the artist or gallerist or whatever in, in that transaction. No, so, so, so let me try to explain. So if you stay on one marketplace, let's say yeah. OpenSea, okay, I'm an artist, I create, we were talking about minting, so uh, uh, an analogy in the real world is you are a photographer, you take a picture and you will create eight editions, uh, the ASEC edition, physical edition, physical prints. So you will, you will pay a printer to, to print eight editions, official editions of the print. You still own the digital file as the artist, and you create, you mint, you print eight editions. So it, minting is ex exactly this. So you will pay something so that these NFTs are created. So it's certificate of ownership of something with a link to the file, the digital file, which is the picture. And... Um, the idea, so when, once I sell this to Frédéric, so Frédéric is the first owner, um, if he uses the same platform to buy something, 
the platform will read the information when, when he's, he, he sells it to, to someone else. Um, they will see that there is a transaction if it is on OpenSea, and they will give 10% to the original owner. If you do this transaction, in fact, the, 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 the NFTs are not only on OpenSea. They are on the blockchain. They are in my wallet, or they are in Frederick's wallet. Okay, he's the buyer. They are in Frederick's wallet. If he wants to send it to somebody else, he's not, uh, uh, it's not mandatory that he uses the OpenSea yeah. platform. So if it's on another platform, maybe depending on the smart contract and the platform, there will be no royalties for the for the original owner, and he can pretend to just give it to somebody. So yeah, no, you no. You can enforce it. Sorry. You can, you can create on a separate platform like uh, zero x splits. Uh, you can enforce the, the the wallet address for the royalty splits and use that for your royalties. So you can enforce it on the blockchain itself. But it's like you said, if you do like just a regular transfer, you can skip it. Yeah. But there are a few ways to yeah. It's a, a little bit yeah. that it's like better regulated, um, and you can add a, a module in the smart contract that that tells if you if you do it in, in purpose to, to skip the royalties that you can take uh, that that you are um, have the right to take legal actions. Okay, it's difficult, anonymous uh, wallet addresses, etc. But I think. The quality of the documentation of the contract and mm -hmm. the contract that you use is also important because if you just use the standards from OpenSea, yeah, then there are a lot of. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to stay to the yeah, yeah, of basic uh, yeah. things that are happening. <laughs> there I are understand, a lot of. I understand. I was maybe to go to go to, to go to go even more basic. Maybe uh, now you can give to uh, Isabel the the uh, the uh, little cards that you uh, made. Up. And then you can explain how to use the uh, to uh, to use the uh, to use the wallet and what is uh, what uh, has what has happened, what is happening, and what will uh, happen with this. Uh, this <laughs> there are a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> but you can distribute every one card to uh, to, all, to all the participants, and uh, also in this. Uh, uh, Little package. Uh, am I mistaken in in uh, saying that uh, that, uh, <laughs> that there is also a uh, a free daily pass for yeah. uh, for class? Yeah, I will add it uh, at the end of the yeah, evening when I at the NFT. Um, but I will try to explain what this is. Um, this is like a, yeah a, a pre-generated wallet. Um, it's, it's just to, to lower the threshold to, to people, uh, to let people afford to have free space. Um, I think it doesn't solve uh, all the problems, uh, definitely not. Um, but it's, it's an ideal way to, to, to offer something uh, for people that are new to it, um, in, in a way that uh, the moment of transaction doesn't have to be something technically. Um, but this is... Um, if you go to the link in, at the back of the card, um, you go to a to a website page um, where they where you get some information about what's an NFT, etc. Uh, some kind of instruction video um, that that guides you through all the steps that you have to take to uh, to start and uh, to, to create or use NFTs. Um, so it's it's just like a, a tool to uh, how do you say it. Uh, um, they don't walk in, uh, like some of them. Yeah, to, uh, to, to lure uh, people into the Web3 space. Um, so actually, when you, for instance, I think one of the most famous wallet providers are uh, Metamask or Coinbase um, in, in the, the Web3 space. Um, when you create a wallet, you got like this really long uh, sentence of, of letters and numbers. Um, that's your unique wallet address. And underneath the, the scratch layer, you got your uh, recovery phrase. It's like a password for your uh, uh, wallet. Um, don't scratch it here and uh, don't give it to others because that's important information. Um, and um, yeah, the, if you go to the web page, um, you got like a small guide to um, how you can install uh, MetaMask and import the wallet that already contains the NFT. Um, and there's like a small paper inside of it 
that tells, uh, I hope, in human language what an NFT is and what a wallet is. Uh, and at the back, uh, you see all the platforms or tools that are used to create the NFT and the wallet. So it's actually um, like a, a small thing to onboard people in the web free space, uh, combined with a little bit of education, actually. Uh, and I hope the, the tutorials are uh, yeah, understandable. <laughs> and, uh, what if you have a wallet and you only want the NFT? What do you say? What if you already have a wallet and you only want the NFT? Yeah, you can import the, the wallet as a second wallet uh, and, and to your uh, wallet provider that you have and uh, transfer the NFT. Uh, without uh, royalties that are taken into account uh, to your other wallet. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's, uh, that's an option. Any more uh, questions? Yes? It's more about the control. Uh, because Olivier talked about it, like he can kind of fake the value of uh, an NFT with different type of account. And I wanted to, to know if there's like an authority who can regulate the market for this kind of uh, for this kind of actions. Sorry, I didn't get the, the, the beginning. Uh, so the beginning uh, earlier, you you spoke about the fact that you can uh, manipulate the value of your own NFT with uh, fake accounts, and I wanted to know if there's an authority who can check it out those uh, those uh, frauds. I, I don't think so, and the uh, art market has been like this for yeah. a long, long time, <laughs> without <laughs> NFTs and blockchain. So, so yeah. No, I don't think so. It's it's one of the it's one of the market that has been uh, unregulated for a very long time. But I was saying that it's only a 65 billion market, so it's yeah. not that big. It's not a financial market. <laughs> You know, maybe you can stand up and tell us now what is hap what will happen uh, uh, upstairs. Oh, you know, I saw the video. Sorry. So, yeah, now we will go upstairs for a for a music show. So, a concert of Nida. And, yeah. Uh, we can go. It's a young artist from Brussels, and uh, she has a lot of uh, things to to share and to tell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>